In this video, I'm going to write a program in C that's going to delete all the lines from a file that match a given string. So for example, I have this file here with several lines of content in it. If I give my program the string ABC space 123, then these three lines that match that string should be deleted from the file. So let's build this together. The first thing I'm going to do is include string.h because the string.h library includes several helpful functions including a string length function and a string comparison function we can use to find matches. I'm also going to include stdbool.h so I can make Boolean variables that can be true and false. So the first thing I'm going to do is ask the user for the file name of the file, and I'll have to store that into a character array. So I'll say here car file name, open bracket, close bracket, and I'll give this character array a length with a constant value here. So I'll say number define, file name size, 1024. So 1024 is going to be more than enough to handle any reasonable length file. So we'll use that as the size of this character right here. Then we'll ask the user to enter the file name. So we'll say printf file, and then we we'll use fgets to actually store the file name that's entered. So we'll say fgets file name, file name, size as a second argument, and then standard in as a third argument. So fgets is going to read from standard input, which by default is going to be the terminal here where the user enters characters from the keyboard. And it's going to store what's entered into the file name character right here as a string. And it'll read up to this amount of characters here. So once we've got the file name stored in the actual file name character array, we do have to do one thing. When the user enters in the string for the file name in the terminal and they hit enter, the new line character that occurs when they hit enter is actually going to be stored into the file name character array as the last character of the string. We want to get rid of that because the file name itself doesn't end with a new line. So here we'll say file name, open bracket, string length, file name, minus one is equal to the null terminator. So what we're doing here is we're saying, let's make the last character of that string equal to the null terminator, which is actually going to terminate the string there. So we're going to take that new line character and we're going to replace it with a null terminator. That's going to end the string one character early, and we're now going to have the correct file name that we want to open. So the way we're going to actually delete these lines from the file is we're actually going to create a temporary file. And we're going to write a new copy of the existing file into that temporary file that excludes the lines that actually match the string we want to delete. Then we'll delete the original file and rename the temporary file to the original file's name. So because we're going to need a temporary file, we're going to have to create a temporary file name for that file. So here I'll say car temp file name, and I'll say file name size again. And what we'll do is we'll copy into that temporary file name character array this file name string, but we're going to prepend to it temp. So I'll say strcpy and I'll say temp file name. And we'll say here temp underscore 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 underscore. So what we're doing is this temp file name character array, we're first putting in the string temp and then four underscores. And then after that, we're going to concatenate the original file name. So that way, in the case of, say, file.txt, the temporary file name will be temp underscore 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 file.txt. So here I'll say str cat, and I'm going to say temp file name, and then file name. So string copy is going to copy into this character array temp and then four underscores. String concatenation is going to actually concatenate to that string the file name. So string copy and string cat and string length, all these functions are coming from that string.h library we included. So that's why it was so important to include it. So next we'll ask the user for the actual string itself, for which we're going to delete every matching line of the file. So here I'll say printf delete line, and then we'll use fgets again. So I'll have to have another character array to store this. So here I'll say car delete line, and I'll say here max underscore line. 
and I'll make this a slightly bigger constant. So I'll say number define max line, and I'll say 2048. That should be more than large enough to store any reasonable length line in a file. So now we can use fgets with this character array. So I'll say fgets, delete line, max line, standard in. And it works basically the same it did as before. This time we're just storing the string that's entered into delete line. So next let's actually open the file and the temporary file. To do that, we are need a couple file handle variables. So here I'll say file, star file, and star temp. And then here I'll say file is equal to f open, file name, and then r. So f open is going to return the file handle itself, and it's going to return the file handle for the file opened with this name here, file name. And we're opening it in read mode. So we're opening the file for reading. Now, if f open can't open the file, it'll actually return null. So in just a little bit, we're actually going to check the file handles to see if they're null. Because if they are, that means something's gone wrong, and we want to stop the program at that point. We'll also open up the temporary file, and that one will be for writing. So here we'll say temp is equal to f open temp file name, and then w. So open up the file with the name of the temp file name for writing. That's what the w means. So next we'll check to see if the files were opened successfully. So if file is equal to null or temp is equal to null, that means there was a problem opening at least one of the files. And so we'll actually exit with an error here. We'll say printf error opening files, and then we'll return one. This will inform the user that something went wrong. Return one is actually a signal to the shell here, to the terminal, that something went wrong in the execution of our program. It will actually stop the execution of our program at this point. So at this point here, we know that the files have been opened successfully. And now what we need to do is read the file one line at a time. Check it for matches. When we find a match, we're not going to write that line to the temp file. Otherwise, we're going to write that line to the temp file. So by the end of that process, the temp file is going to contain everything from the original file except for the matches. So let's do that first. Here we'll say bool keep reading is equal to true. This is going to be a Boolean variable that lets us know whether we should keep reading the file or not. Then here I'll say do while keep reading is true. So we're going to keep running this loop so long as keep reading is set to true. And we can set it to false when we actually want to stop reading content from the file. So to actually read in each line of the file, I'm going to need some kind of character array to do that. So up here, I'll make another character array. Here I'll say car buffer max line. And buffer is going to actually read in each line of the file. It's going to store the actual content of that line. So down here, we'll then say f gets buffer max line and file. So we're using f gets again, it's going to work in a similar way. And here what we're saying is not read from standard in, we're saying read from the file. And we're going to store that line of the file into buffer up to max line. Now, if we reach the end of the file, f eof is going to be true when we pass it the file handle. So here, if I say if f eof file, this is going to be true if we've reached the end of the file. And if that's the case, we'll set keep reading to false and we'll stop reading the file at this point. If it's not the case that FUF is true, then it's possible the line we just read in is a match for the line we want to delete. We can check that using the string comparison function. So I'll see here else if string comparison buffer and delete line doesn't equal zero. So if the buffer contains a string that's equal to the line we want to delete from the file, it's going to return zero. So, so long as it's not zero, that means the string in the buffer doesn't match the string we want to delete. 
In other words, the line in the file we're looking at currently doesn't match the string we want to delete. And if that's the case, we want to write it to the temp file. So we'll say here, f puts buffer temp. So f puts will write this string in the buffer to the temp file. So again, what's going on here is we're going through the entire original file and we're only writing lines to the temporary file so long as they don't match the line we want to delete. So at this point, temp now contains a version of the file with those lines we want to delete removed. So the next step is we're going to actually delete the original file and rename the temp file to that original file name. So here we'll say f close file and f close temp. And we'll just close the file handles. And then here we'll say remove file name. This is going to delete the actual original file. And then we'll say rename temp file name to file name. So this will actually rename the temporary file to the original file name. So we'll save this and we'll give it a try now. So we'll do a compilation. We'll say gcc o d d dot c to compile it. And then assuming there's no errors, we'll run it. And there was no errors. That's pretty good. So we'll run it. So file, we'll say file.txt. Delete line, we'll say abc123. Now we'll check the file to see if those lines were deleted. So we check the file and we can see those lines with abc space 123 were deleted. And so we've written a function in C that can delete lines from a file that match a particular string. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.